Welcome folks to a um, short tutorial. Uh, it's just regarding a project that we've got on the go at the moment uh, regarding creating the low poly models for um, for rare games and again I was just talking to a couple of students today um, about how to kind of achieve this kind of stylized kind of quite sort of chunky look you know it almost kind of looks like kind of chocolate you know it's, it's got that kind of like chunkiness about it. it's got the mitered edges so I was going to have a go at just sort of recreating this <clears throat> and doing a few things that can really turn it around from looking like something that's kind of like fairly moderate to something that actually looks um, you know like um, you know quite effective so without further ado I'm going to start by creating uh, the top here now a quick way around this is you could use the um, the, the um, polygon tool which is there I mean that's always an option you could do that certainly that can be quite an effective way um, and I'll just show you as an example there's, there's, I'll show you kind of both ways and then uh, I'll let you make your own mind up so it's going to go to the top view there I'm going to drop when it decides to let me drop okay something's gone on I'm not entirely sure what let's go escape alright there we are and I'm going to drop oh my it's been very slow alright okay let's try that again don't quite know what happened there. So let's go into the uh, plane tool. There we go. Okay, there we go. And just enlarge that a bit. So I'm, I'm going to concentrate on this area here. Yep. So, um, in fact, I can sort of start from there really. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to go to the mesh tools and create polygon. Now in order to kind of see what you're doing it's quite useful to um, to put it into a sort of transparent mode so when you start working you'll see okay I'll just start kind of clicking in there. Now you can see there there's already this like pink um, pink area. Now that's all right but once it kind of starts getting into areas where you need to kind of cross over it can be a problem so you can go one or two ways you could either choose to kind of like um, press that or I think it's four let's try that again I might be wrong there we go yeah so it's either that symbol there or just press four and then you can sort of go back to here which I think is is that six there we go it's six so four on six you can kind of toggle back and forth in between so I'm going to go back to 4 and then I'm going to basically just take this all the way down I'm not going to worry too much about the little notches because if we're going to model this in Maya um, we're going to finish it off in 3D coat so we've got that there I'm going to hit enter it then gives us our basically our outline but of course the, it's not complete as of yet because we've still got if I just press 6 there um, we've still got to uh, extrude out from that okay so we do that by pressing control and E and then you can either do it by hand or just use local translate now at the moment it's kinda like it's got it in reverse yeah, which is not a problem at all. We can just flip it, but uh, I want to kind of make sure I get, kind of get the thickness right. So something like that, say, that's kind of looking all right. Go into object mode, and all we need to do with that then is mesh display and reverse, and it just basically flips the normals. There we go. So that's all good. So what else can we do? Well, if we take, if we are sort of taking this approach, uh, having things like subdivisions uh, are good. Again, though, if we go this route, uh, we are sort of restricted in in how we can kind of uh, manipulate it. So, for example, I can do the size; that's fine. 
uh, with face I can certainly look at perhaps extruding that so doing like offsets and that can be a way of just kind of oops and then click on that again control E and again offset but you can see there there are some problems uh, that arise with that you get this kind of crossing over with the geometry but as a kind of start you know if that's the route you kind of want to take that's absolutely fine uh, but it does have its limitations and if you want to kind of you know uh, manipulate this a little bit more that's probably where you're going to have to uh, go into doing things like connecting up you know using the multi-cut uh, tool to kind of connect up your uh, vertex like so and again it gets very very fiddly but you know it depends on what you what you're going for because it could be that whatever whatever you're doing it could work with that you know and you can you can you know uh, manipulate your model uh, quite readily you know using this method it's just that it is it does get very kind of bitty and you know it's time consuming because then you're having to kind of like put it all in by hand and you know and then have to sort of do the same on the other side okay and you know and then when it kind of comes to doing things like um, manipulating the vertex yes you can do it if I press soft selection you can certainly do it but again you know it's kind of it's a little bit of a pain you know and you could end up with some kind of weird areas where, um, where you know you haven't got any kind of like um, vertexes you're not you haven't got any geometry and you can end up with some you know some sort of strange sort of geometry going on but that's one option and again if it works for you then then use it the other option we're going to go with today is to use just center that is uh, to basically go over it again but this time what we'll do is we'll uh, create a um, bit of geometry here so we'll put a, a polygon cube in there we'll go into the top view and we'll expand this out like so until we get the approximate size so something like that and then you can uh, have a think about you know um, so I'll put this like I'll call this tabletop and then think about how many subdivisions you want to put in there so let's say I don't know let's make it something like 10 10 by 10 by 10 if I just thought we're going to the now on the side here though probably don't need it as much as that in terms of the height so maybe I'll just put that as 2 or maybe 4 I don't know let's have a look yeah something like that alright and then I can have a look at just scaling this down like so again you can reduce them you know more if you like I can make it maybe six by six by six that could be one always make that uh, four there at the side again it's entirely up to you the main thing is is that you've got your um, enough polygon to kind of give the shape all right now let's go back to the top view right so first of all we want to start kind of manipulating this and this for this we'll need to kind of go into the vertex and you can see there so we've got some kind of shapes going on and again it's just really a case of just moving things around so moving it around to the shape that you want don't worry too much about the the, the little um, <coughs> nicks in there all the little kind of cuts we can take care of that when it comes to 3d coat so again just kind of move generally getting the overall shape that's what we're aiming for not getting lost in the details I want to move that over there a little bit okay then 
just moving that around there. So basically just getting the overall contour. Okay, so if that's all looking good, I'm just going to go back to the perspective view. And this is where you need to be thinking in terms of, right, right I've got the overall shape, um, but what about the rest of it? So for example, if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see there, if I'm going to here, I've got this kind of like bevel uh, thing going on. Now, you could technically, you could actually take care of that in 3D coats. You could smooth off the edges. But I'm going to have a go and see if I can actually just mite to the edges, so at least just give ourselves a little bit of a head start. So I'm going to go to edge mode take it off um, the um, soft selection and I'm just gonna shift double click shift double click shift double click so it's all the way around go to our tools go down to bevel and again just be sort of sparing with this so I'll, I'll probably put it that probably looks about right and then do the same on the other side what I might do is I might just raise this off the ground a little bit, just so I can see underneath. So double click, shift, double click. I'll rotate round, shift, double click, rotate round, shift, double click. So just make sure you've got all the all the edges covered. Same thing again with bevel. Yeah. And again, you can sort of play around with a you know bevel whichever way you like just be you know again consistency is good so you know you want to kind of keep it roughly like it is in the illustration so that's kind of looking it's not looking too bad the next bit though and this is kind of where you really want to be giving the um, giving the table some life is and this is where I'm going to go into vertex I'm going to go back to soft selection and make sure the brush isn't too big and too small so something like that, say. And you want to highlight an area, you press the W key, and then we can start kind of like giving it a bit of shape, you know, warping it. Like so. So this is like an old wooden table that's seen a lot of action. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people who've been using it in the past. So time and time has sort of taken its toll on this thing. So again, it's always good to kind of like give your objects a story. They're not just objects. Give them character. So I was talking to some students about this today. It's like, you know, give it life. Almost like you could almost like um anthropomorphize it. You know, so treat it almost as if it's like a living a living thing. Again, I'll just isolate part of that. Turn it up in the end. And you can see there already now, it starts to kind of I mean, I'm veering from the script slightly. You can see there, this is a little bit more conservative than uh, what I'm doing here. But just to kind of illustrate how you can really start to kind of give things a lot more character. You know, you can bring things out, pull things in. You know, best thing to do is just have fun. Have fun with it. Anyway, so let's imagine like that's our kind of wonky table there. So I've kind of I've veered off slightly from that, and then we've got the other part, which is the the legs here, which are kind of one either side. And again, I could kind of like I could sight this by eye, possibly. I mean, I could have a look at that. It's a, essentially it's like an ar an arch, yeah. So again, I could probably look to let's have a think about this. Could potentially use a cylinder for that, or I could use a square. Let's have a look at cylinder. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Let's have a look. So I'm going to have a look at the cylinder, and I'll, I'll maybe take the. I'll call this legs. Okay. Oops, sorry, that legs. And we'll take it down to about ten. Okay, so we've got part of that there. Now is this going to work? That's a very good question. 
going to have a look at face maybe take that off soft selection it might be I might have to sort of just default to a a um, square we'll see or cube okay Do offset. Ooh. Okay, that's interesting. Not sure what's going on there. I'm almost tempted to just go with a square. But you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I think um if I just zoom in a little bit, I don't quite know what's going on there. It's got a weird subdivision. It's almost like a split. What's going on there? Odd. Um, but yeah, I think um, without devoting too much time to this, I'm inclined possibly to go with option B. We'll see. I'll just, I'll just give this another couple of minutes and uh, see if it works out. You can see there, you can see what I'm going for. Yeah, kind of got that kind of shape going on. I can manipulate it. Um, all right. Okay, let's let's just see if this has got legs. Excuse the pun. Um, let's take that and and then we'll use local. Oh, I've selected a face there, a rogue face. There we are. There's the culprit. Right, let's try that again. Local trans. Oh no, it's done it again. Where's that going from? And what happened there? Okay, I'm not quite sure what going on there. All right, okay, very odd. It looks like it's selected. Ah, oh, it selected the. Um, looks like it selected the face as well. All right, third time lucky. Let's try that again. Offset. there and then we'll try and do this without selecting all the all the rest of the faces that's weird though I don't know why I've done that and let's go again mm -mm -mm. okay I think what I'll do is I will insert an edge loop something like that and then I'll go into face mode Don't you just love cold calls? All right. Where, where, where was I? All right. Okay. Great. Thanks for that interruption. Right. Um, so I've selected faces, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of that there. So it's going to leave us with a bit of a gap. It's not a problem though, because let's get rid of that. Because we'll just do we'll just go fill hole. So I'll just go into object mode. Edge, select those edges. Actually, think what I might do is I might try this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Fact, what I could do is, I'm probably making this a little bit more complicated than, than it should be, is to mirror it. We'll mirror it from a different axis. From the y axis, so something like that. 
again I'm probably like overly complicating it it's just so it's sealed up there and then I'm going to see if I can bridge the rest of that or indeed fill the hole, see if fill the hole works yeah but that's kind of <laughs> That's not really done what I wanted to do. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Alright, a little bit of a lengthy process, but um, just to kind of get that desired effect. Yeah, so I wanted to kind of, you know, get it all the way through. Alright, well that's kind of looking okay. And, um, yeah, so next what I want to do is go to face. And again, yeah, if you, if you find like a simpler method of doing this then you can go with that you know these are just suggestions that I kind of throw up so don't feel obliged to do everything that I'm asking you to do so I'm just going to double click that go fill the hole double click that fill the hole and I think just sometimes it's good just to explore your options I think that's that's kind of where I'm coming from and you know sometimes you know you fail miserably but that's you know but then you don't find anything out I mean I've failed a lot in uh, uh, the stuff that I've been doing you know in the in the past and even in the present you know and um, you have to fail it's just really crucial actually to your development failure is an option you know failure is a good thing it tends to be kind of like looked up looked at quite negatively I think uh, by people when they say oh I failed it's like well no actually no fail contrary to kind of like popular belief is um, is a very very valuable thing it's a it's a an opportunity for growth um, of course failing habitually and then not learning from the failures yeah I mean that's not good because basically you're ignoring that means you're ignoring something that you should be sort of uh, addressing and you're choosing not to so and again I think we've all been there to a certain extent I certainly have anyway all right, so let's all right. Let's go with that object mode. I'm just going to recenter that, center pivot, and then let's see if we can just scale that down. Okay, so it took us a little bit of a while to get there, but um, you know it's worth kind of taking that journey. Right, so object mode. I'm going to go to rotate, and again, if you want to get precise with stuff like this, if you go to channel box, you'll see there the moment it's kind of like you know minus 77 minus it. now it wants to be 90 degrees so because this is going in the minus we want minus 90 yep and then we know that it's exactly 90 degrees okay so that's that and then um, again we need to be sort of just looking at the reference yeah so looking at this so again I mean if you want to we can have a look look at it comparatively I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just rotate this again minus 90 right and then we'll look at it comparatively and kind of go okay I can see what's kind of going on there um, it's kind of like chunkier at the bottom and then it kind of dips down actually so we can try and do both ends or one of the things we could do is we could split it again, delete, and then just do one side, right? And then manipulate it that way. So I'm going to have a look at front view and zoom in a bit there. And what I'll do is I'll just go into object mode. Oops, I'm going to object mode. And we'll just enlarge this just a little bit. We can always shrink it back down again. let's have a look at giving this some shape so it's kind of like I'm going to go into the vertex mode so it's kind of chunkier at the bottom again it's something like yeah and then it kind of goes up doesn't it but then it kind of like dips down so that's the tricky part and then sort of dips down doesn't it like so Gonna dip, 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 dip down. I'm gonna dip that down as well, 
and um, again I'm not going to get too hung up uh, when it, in terms of like you know the um, the shape of it because we can sort of take care of that uh, in 3D coat yes you guessed it 3D coat all right so something like that and I'll probably take I'll probably do something with that in fact what I think one of the things I could do is I could put a subdivision in there so just to give it that bow so I'm going to hold down shift and just put a few subdivisions in there like so and then that'll give us the the curvature that we need just remembering to highlight all of the vertexes by the way you don't want to just do one so something like that okay and then that'll mirror on the other side like so I might see if we can drop in another there we go drop in another set there all right let's go into the perspective mode just have a look at it let's have a look at our creation all right so again you could maybe put some more subdivisions in there as you so wish on there and then again if you want to you can go into edge mode double click on that side and we'll go to bevel just create a little bit of a bevel there that's looking pretty cool do the same on the other side bevel same on that side bevel and you guessed it same on the other side and bevel okay and might just want to drop another couple of subdivisions in there like so alright so that's looking pretty cool and then uh, we can go into object mode and we can mirror this now this time though if we go to mirror we're going to put it in yeah I need to have a look at there we go it's just slightly off there so something like yeah you want board emerged as well so something like that again use your own discretion I'm guessing something like that but yeah okay and then when you're happy with it just click off click on again and that's all now one object pretty cool and if you want to like the table you can add some distortion right so again go to vertex and we can do things like you know again we could probably use something like soft selection so click on B and you know just just kind of pull it out push it in um, just have a play make it look not so perfect you don't want it to be perfect Okay, that's probably a little bit too much, uh, something like that. Now, I forgot to do that edge. Let's see if it still works. All right, I might just narrow that down a little bit, just so it's not gathering everything together. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. So something like that, and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make that down out of the way. All right, I'm going to go back into uh, Edge and just see if I can take it off soft selection. Just going to see if I can double click it. I bet I can't now. I've scuppered myself. I've got those edges, but I'm probably going to have to do them manually now, which is rather annoying. Let's see if that works. Bevel. All right, that works. 
and then do the same on the other side. I'm going to double click that. And again, I'm probably going to have to do these by hand. So holding down Shift and clicking as we go along. Okay, and like so. Right, I think that's got everything. And then bevel, there we are. So, pretty cool. Go back to object mode. And then we can think about putting it into, oops, putting it into, or attaching it to our table, right? So again, I can either change the size of that or I can change the size of this doesn't really matter so I think I'll just change the size of this possibly or maybe not I don't know we'll see so I'm just looking at that in comparison to the illustration about I might just expand that a little bit like so and just zoom in a little bit because I think on the on that one there's like a there seems to be like a bit of a gap all right so something like that okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hold down Shift and D. So I can duplicate that one, bring it across to there. And again. Alright. And then what I'll do is I'll just combine all these all right so there we are we've got our kind of stylized little table and it's looking pretty cool and um, that's gonna be it for this video um, we may revisit this uh, shortly and have a look at putting it into 3d coat and sculpt into it a little bit more and also painting it so stay tuned but uh, that's it for now thanks for watching folks uh, be sure to leave me a like and leave comments and uh, if you have any questions um, uh, give them to me and I'll uh, see if I can get back to you as soon as that's it thanks for watching see you later bye